First of all, I would like to take the lead for the first uh, few seconds. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear professors and uh, panelists and the colleagues, uh, it is a great honor for me tonight to introduce uh, all the panelists uh, tonight, uh, but I will leave them to uh, our uh, moderator, uh, Dr. Rabab Safwat, from an anesthesiologist from, uh, originally from Alexandria, but she's working now in uh, London. And uh, another uh, moderator, which is great honor to have here tonight, for the first time, uh, Dr. Salam uh, Mishrofa. Uh, she's working in Qatar Hamad, uh, Hamad Medical Corporation as a straight consultant of anesthesiology. Uh, uh, it is a great honor to have both of them on board tonight to be moderator for this session. And uh, all yours, Dr. Abab and Dr. Salam. Thank you. Uh, dear panelists and attendees, welcome to the uh, MEGA online anesthesiology course on its eighth session in uh, 2021. Uh, tonight is really exceptional, and that's because we've got the experts on board. Um, they will share their knowledge and experience in the fields of intensive care medicine, anesthesia, and pain. Uh, but before we start, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Professor, uh, Professor Saad Mahdi and his team uh, for the uh, outstanding effort uh, behind this distinguished course. And it's always an honor for me to join the team. Uh, tonight on the speaker's side, uh, our eminent guests, uh, Professor Samir Al-Ansari, Dr. Mohammed Wahba, and Professor uh, Meghid Al-Ansari. On the moderator side, myself, Rabab Ibrahim, and my uh, dear colleague, Dr. Sanam Marichova, uh, Associate Consultant and Anesthesiologist, Hamad Medical Corporate Qatar. Um, so now we will proceed to our next speaker. Uh, he is um, a very prominent professor, Professor Maggid. Is well known for his indispensable contributions to developing and promoting pain education and pain services all over the Middle East and Africa. Uh, Professor Maggid is honorary member in the International Association for the Study of Pain. He's a founder of Egyptian Society for the Management of Pain, and he was its president for six years. Dr. Maggid. Uh, pushed the establishment of some IASP chapters in Libya, Ghana, and Jordan, and national pain societies in Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq. Uh, professor is a member in the task force of IASP for pain education in developing countries. He has impressive professional activities in Egypt, Africa, and the Middle East. He is a member of the Pan Arab Institute of Pain, council member of African Palliative Care Association and the founder, teacher, and examiner of the master's degree in pain management at Al-Azhar University in Cairo. He's a founder and director of Avicenna Pain Relief Unit. Professor Maggot is a founder and the current secretary general of the Arab Medical Union for Pain Management and a member of International Pain Advisory Board and um, Control of Narcotics and Drug Prescriptions. Professor is founder and the current secretary general of the first Pan-African Pain Conference. He's a founder, teacher, and examiner of master's degree in pain management at the National Cancer Institute and Al-Azhar University in Cairo. He's the executive officer for the dissemination of WHO program for the management of cancer pain. Professor wrote vast number of publications on subject of pain. Today, he will be presenting about pain syndromes in some viral infections. Professor, we are delighted to have you today. Please, you may start your presentation. Yes. Uh, I, I think you, you said a very uh, long list of for introduction and I'm grateful actually to my colleagues and my sons. Uh, they presented very, very nice talks. But uh, as you can see that I'm interested in history. So instead of Sphinx to tell you the secrets, I try to tell you the secrets about some points in virus infection. It is well known that SARS-CoV-2 is the cause of COVID-19 disease. But for this just basic slide about basic science in virology or not virologists, but SARS-CoV-2 infects the cell through angiotensin-converting enzyme to receptor. This 
and then he's going to uh, tell you the secrets of the virus infection and I'm going to speak or to talk to you on behalf of Sphinx. He is silent all the time. Now, SARS, so SARS-CoV-2 infects the cell through uh, angiotensin converting enzyme to receptor. But with two wings like the football match, the, ring of the left wing by protease enzymes that will activate the spikes of the or the spike protein of the virus, that's at the wing uh, uh, left, and the wing right enhanced by neuropylene uh, mediator one and two. And by these three arrows, the infected cell will be transformed into the service of the COVID-19, and then will try to come to uh, uh, replication and infection of the other cells result in acute and chronic pain. Here we have this problem about uh, the classic viral infections that some viral infections like influenza just cause the respiratory tract infection and the most of the viruses will do that. But some other viruses have certain affinity to the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system in the meantime, resulting in Julian Barry syndrome Herpes zoster is the most common to attack the CNS and the peripheral and central and in the skin in the meantime with the polio virus to attack the motor system. You have enteroviruses to in the gastrointestinal tract. And but specifically COVID virus, it would attack or overwhelming respiratory nervous system, gastrointestinal, everybody, as my friend uh, said, that it would attack six system, not just the nervous system, but I am my concentration on the pain and nervous system. Types of infection or in acute infection with COVID-19, you have acute pain. Like any other viral infection, you have in acute stage, you have headache, you have a joint and the muscle pain, uh, what you call it, my bone aches all over the body. But after sometimes acute pain will turn it to be a chronic neuropathic pain, or we can call it the long virus, and my friend call it post-COVID uh, uh, disease. We call it uh, another name, long virus infection. Chronic pain patients already, they have chronic pain. Once infected by the, by the coronavirus, will have more and more aggravation of their pain. But there is a socioeconomic and uh, 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 mental stress on those patients because they send, they, most of the patients, they felt uh, condemned or something wrong. And you can remember that in the uh, start of the disease, everyone is afraid as if he has a, a very Ill, grave illness and everybody would like to be away from the patient, even he's uh, uh, free of uh, SARS, uh, of COVID now, but is still condemned as he has certain uh, uh, communicable disease. And this will actually, sometimes they are frustrated and discontinue the, the, the medication and the, their condition may be worse and worse. And the problem of uh, 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 the social uh, stress or psychological stress with anti-aggregant and non-steroidal anti inflammatory uh, drugs will result in what we call it stress ulcer in all river. All over, uh, it is something well known in the ICU and for a, person to be locked down or for isolated for 15 days, just in one room, actually it is something like in the prison. The most uh, common viruses to cause the neurological complication, complications, not only the COVID-19, but we have herpes zoster, acute and chronic polyneuropathy, acute polyradicular neuritis like Julian Marie syndrome, Steinvar virus, hepatitis, AIDS, and cytomegalovirus and enterovirus, influenza, Zika, central nervous system disease and lesions are very common in the form of transverse myelitis, encephalomyelitis, and cerebral stroke. Here is a nice presentation of herpes zoster virus and a very colorful one, but the, the uh, attracting point is that most of the virus, they have such spikes like these spikes are used to encode the cell membrane of the human cell. 
they know the, 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 the code or they know the composition of the cell membrane to invade uh, the, uh, the cell and to go into the nucleus of the cell. And here you have the typical herpes zoster after healing from the rashes and so on. Uh, and this actually a collection from uh, Babi Sharia University Hospital in the Pink Clinic. But strange enough, it is strictly unilateral. But sometimes it is bilateral. It is very rare gathering. I have seen it once in my life over 40 years in the Pink Clinic. Now, posterior is very common and it will result in uh, uh, skin CNS disease or neuropathic pain caused by a Brazil virus, but with a previous infection with chicken pox in the early childhood, and it will stay, the virus will stay dormant or hidden in the dorsal root ganglia for 50 or 60 years until old age, and then decline in the cell mediated immunity, and it will flare up as uh, inflammation in the ganglia and actually skin is a dermatomal distribution. And the CNS, I think uh, you can remember the embryology that you have uh, ect ectoderm differentiated into uh, central nervous system and to uh, uh, skin. So the, uh, the herpes zoster is a disease of the embryo. It is not a disease of the, uh, of the old man. Pain actually is a neuropathic and burning and the paroxysmal constant or uh, paroxysmal with allodynia. And the most of the patient coming with uh, taking off their clothes or taking their clothes out of to not touch their skin. It's a very, actually very ty severe type of pain ranging from just lack of sleep until to commit suicide. Vaccination is promising, but actually the contraindication of vaccination uh, uh, is not suitable for everybody, but uh, I'm not going to, to do more details about herpes zoster. Now you have the AIDS virus also with these spikes. So I think the corona is not specific for uh, uh, for the uh, SARS virus. I, uh, maybe these uh, uh, spikes are very powerful. Uh, AIDS virus actually results in loss of immunity and due to loss of immunity, and it will induce loss of immunity with peripheral polyneuropathy, either by interaction and the, uh, with uh, uh, myelin sheaths to do myelination, or the uh, activation of the, the glial cells. And the glial cells are the housekeepers of the CNS. They are giving oxygen and giving vasoconstriction, vasodilatation to the neuronal cells. But once they are affected, they started to be uh, wicked uh, and uh, uh, pain transmitters of neuropathic type of pain. Now you have allodynia, also burning sensation, and specifically in the lower limbs. But this is not the end of the story. AIDS, its own right, will do high or associated with a high incidence of cancer with subsequent cancer pain, and this is a completely different story. Now the enterovirus also with the spikes. Enterovirus D68, actually responsible about respiratory disorder. It is a major cause for acute flaccid paralysis and is common in USA. By 2012, they have every now and then a flare up uh, uh, epidemic in uh, USA, but actually one third of them, they have neuropathic pain and flaccid paralysis. Well, but the problem that motor sequelae are possible and the chronic pain has been reported after one year. So don't think that uh, uh, by the symptoms uh, uh, are out or overcome but it's still that you have a resident evil coming or present dormant inside the nervous system. The polio virus actually, uh, it is a present, actually this is history of 3,700 years B BC with a mummy in the Egyptian museum with a person with a stick with this typical poliomyelitis leg uh, uh, and actually uh, present actually in another 
stone the leaves in King Niptah. You know, sometimes some recent researches about still in the ancient times. And by 18th century, uh, Anna Domina, the, the, the first description of polio virus by and the polio disease by Underwood and the first epidemic was isolated in the, in the 19th century by uh, in the of, of polio in island of Santa Helena. Poliomyelitis vaccination is very good, but in developing countries, it is a, a problem and paralysis incidence of paralysis is very high, uh, about 60 or 70 or 80 percent. They have chronic uh, symptoms or chronic uh, uh, symptomatic nervous disease, muscle weakness, myalgia, joint pain, uh, osteopathic de deformity and joint pain also, limbing with other, uh, the other leg would be called complaint. And in uh, women, actually, the problem is more in women rather in, uh, uh, in men. So the problem will be more complicated in women. In the, but the post polio is due to, maybe it is due to production of pro-inflammatory cytokines released in the central nervous system. So the, actually, the general mechanism of the virus is almost the same. Uh, but is, is it any benefit from immunoglobulins? I don't think it is possible to be to treat the COVID-19 with this. But here we something actually if my interest and my Africa and in Middle East, uh, not in Middle East, in Africa and in the Far East and in uh, 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 South America, there is a certain mosquito with uh, a special virus called the chikungunya. Chikungunya actually very uh, disease similar to what we have with also uh, uh, CNS disease for nervous system, myopathy, myelitis, and so on. But another type of uh, virus in the, the uh, developing countries called Zika, which is peripheral nervous system disease resulting only in Julian Borea, Julian Barry syndrome, or uh, T lymphotrophic viruses also the same conditions. So we would call it the tropical spastic paralysis, specifically in tropical areas. Other virus available with the spikes, no problem. We have other coronavirus like SARS-1 with severe respiratory system syndrome and the Julian Barré syndrome. We are not uh, uh, as strong to do an epidemic or a pandemic effect like SARS-2. Still, we have something for our own. It is uh, uh, Middle East Respiratory Coronavirus Syndrome and with a specific in the Middle East area with actually neurological complications and severe pain. But if you have a patient who is a pre-existing condition of neuropathic pain, whatever may be their lesion, post amputation, paper, uh, diabetic neuropathy, uh, post hepatic neuralgia, spider, whatever the cause of pain, post stroke, central pain. So the patient will suffer more and more from this pain, from these problems. So either the patient has nothing, and then after COVID, he is going to have neuropathic pain, or the patient with already neuropathic pain and painful, chronic pain problems. Once he do a good infection with uh, uh, COVID, he will be a victim of more painful conditions. This may be due to the release of toxins, which will aggravate the pre-existing pain or uh, ex exacerbation of an acute attack of herpes zoster again. So, so, so many uh, conditions of acute herpes zoster after the relapse or after the uh, COVID-19 passed away. Here, the uh, friend or our enemy. Now the ICU in the, uh, uh, what we call it in the uh, COVID in the ICU, uh, in, the, in, the, in the ICU units, actually it is very common to have myopathy, you have tissue injuries, because the patient long recumbency, either in uh, supine or prone position or lap 
of uh, 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 turning over the patients and uh, maybe for instrumentation like chest tubes, like tracheostomy, like uh, cannulations of uh, arteries or veins. So uh, the problem coming from cytokine secretion, there is a general circulation of the virus and the direct invasion of the olfactory epithelium we call loss, cause, uh, loss of smell. Actually, it comes to my mind uh, uh, with the presentation of my friend, Professor uh, Samir Ansar. About, we are talking all the time about viral infection or bacterial infection, about fungus infection. It is very common in the ICU. It's called the viral fungi, actually uh, a resistant condition. Maybe we can discuss it in during uh, uh, the questions. So acute phase will be turned to be chronic, but you cannot differentiate between COVID-19 and influenza. All will be accompanied by headache, dizziness, refractory, or loss or taste disorders. But in hospitalized, in hospitalized patient, he has a problem. The incidence of the cerebral stroke, meningitis, and encephalitis is higher. You have coagulopathy and you have uh, 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 virotoxins circulating and with more and more disease, especially in the hospitalized patients. Autoimmune disease actually will be more uh, uh, common, like Julian Barry syndrome or disseminated, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. So, why? And sick pain hospitalized the patient with COVID is actually underestimated because it can develop, can be developed either not in the acute stage, but after the injury with some months like one year, like I've said before. The management of uh, uh, pain uh, due to a viral infection on the top will be uh, for uh, COVID-19, pharmacological I'm going to adopt the WHO and the GZ clutter step two, which means we can use non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, which is paracetamol. I don't know about the other uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. They have some anti aggregant properties, they have some analgesic, but they can do re release of uh, leukotrienes with bronchospasm. They can do more and more bleeding from the gastric or uh, renal damage or whatever. So I, I just asked you the, the question of anti steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, except the paracetamol in COVID-19, questionable for me. Tramadol in the form of 50 milligrams three times to, the, to up to 400 milligrams or 300 milligrams. Gabapentinoids like gabapentin and pregabalin antidepressant or the serotonin and the noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors or tricyclic antidepressants are a very good example. You can put uh, lidocaine or capsaicin uh, 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 patches, very important. Light is good as a systemic analgesic. Capsaicin will actually uh, do much in uh, viral infection, especially in presence of herpes zoster. Uh, with good relief of pain, but botulinum toxin sometimes used for uh, peripheral neuropathy, but actually in presence of encephalomyelitis and peripheral CNS disease, I think this toxin will be questionable uh, to make more and more flaccid paralysis. Uh, strong opioids are actually uh, refractory or questionable because tramadol is better. Because just opio strong opioids are just analgesics. But tramadol is not strong as the strong opioids, but it has a dopamine like effect and it has serotonergic effect, so analgesic effects. So, actually, in neuropathic pain, tramadol will be superior to the other, than the, uh, other uh, strong opioids like morphine uh, or even uh, fentanyl patch. Non-pharmacological things actually like transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation, which is very innocent and very simple. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, 
which is actually also non-invasive or spinal cord stimulation, which is quite invasive material. And we have these three pictures for stimulation, or you have it as spinal cord stimulation techniques, and you have to put uh, electrodes and so on, or repetitive transcranial magnetic non-invasive techniques for such condition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Hello. Maggett. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody has a question, so please, you may type in question and answer box. We're waiting. Dr. Saad, is there any questions from the Facebook? I don't see any questions on the Facebook. Yes, it is a subject, I know. All of them saying the, this is great. A subject for us as I know it is a tough subject. It's very good lecture, bro. Thank you. It, it was very, very informative. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay. So uh, this concludes our uh, today's session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, our eminent professors and doctors. Um, and then we hope to see you again on next uh, Tuesday, I think.